Hi, welcome to the Men Life Farmhouse. I'm Leanne, if you're new here, and I wanna thank everybody that's subscribed to my channel and is enjoying my content. I just basically, if you're new here, I just basically follow you along in tutorials on what I am doing in my kitchen, whether it be baking or dehydrating or canning or fermenting or sourdough, which I haven't even touched on yet. I'm really trying to do two videos a week. Today, I'm taking you along as I'm canning pineapple candied jalapenos. I love this version of cowboy candy <laughs> just because I love when I have heat, I really do like my fruit flavor with it. Like, Tastefully Simple has the, used to have this pomegranate chili sauce that I really loved. Let's get to it, shall we? I think I found the easiest way to slice jalapenos, especially for this recipe. Gotta make sure you have your gloves on. Look at that. All right, with only coughing like you had Corona for a few seconds and maybe 10 minutes worth of work, we got jalapenos sliced. All right, after I sliced all those with the KitchenAid attachment, which happens to be my mother-in-law's, and my husband comes home when she's picking up the attachment, says, why is there no seeds in this? So I decided to go buy more jalapenos. I don't know why I bought them. I didn't want to harass anybody. Say, hey, can I pick some jalapenos? So we're gonna just cut these up. Cause there's not that many. And add some heat to the jalapenos. All right, I have weighed my jalapenos and I almost have four pounds. So I think I'm gonna make enough brine for two because you always have enough left over to can separately. So I think that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna add about one and a half cups of apple cider vinegar. And then we're gonna just add four cups of sugar. All right, then we're gonna let that dissolve and come to a boil. The recipe also calls for mustard seed. And I'm debating if I even want to put it in because I'm sure it's just flavor. All right, so in order to get it up to a boil, you should have it on a higher heat. All right. All right, since I can't leave nothing alone, well, sometimes I can. I'm gonna drain the juice from the pineapple into the brine. That'll give it some flavor. So we're gonna bring this to a low boil and let it simmer five minutes. Then we're gonna add the jalapenos, then let that simmer five minutes. Then at that point, we're gonna be ready to load the jars. All right, all right, we are definitely simmering. So we want five minutes. And I'll bring you back in five minutes when we add the jalapenos. Add these jalapenos slowly so the seeds don't go everywhere and I don't cough like I have a malfunction. All right. Hmm. 
these will cut down. Sure. I might be able to get the last of them in here. And when you get the jalapenos in the pot, you're going to simmer them five minutes. As you can see, they have cooked down a little bit. I was almost worried that this was going to be a flop. But, you know, go with your gut, you know? All right, we're going to get ready to fill some jars. I always like to wash my lids in hot soapy water because you just don't know who's touched them and the manufacturer if their facilities are even clean and if you're going to have this touch your food for a long period of time I, I feel better if I just wash them in soapy water just for a quick second all right let's get our equipment ready here I'm gonna get my magic wand my headspace checker and since my headspace checker is no longer a bubbler, I'm going to use a stainless steel knife to debubble. And we got our rings back here. It's on my handy dandy paper towel holder here. And we got our jars. So we need a jar lifter. All right. Directions say to put four to five chunks of pineapple in. But since I have more, we're going to do that. Then we're going to use a slotted spoon to put your jalapenos in. And don't breathe the fumes, I'm telling you. You want to pack them in because then you're like, why did I put more in after you get them out of the water bath canner? I say that every year. <laughs> All right. So make sure you get them packed in there. Let's go ahead and put some more pineapple on top here. put your brine on it. See how much brine goes in? Not very much. You want it to bubble? Debubble, debubble, debubble. All right. Then we're going to add more brine. And we're going to write for a rim. Maybe I should be using rubber gloves. <laughs> All right. Put our ring on, lid on, and our ring. Fingertip tight. Pineapple. All right, we'll fill up one more jar here. Add 
some pineapple because you don't want to leave that out. I just wanted to show you how much brine I had left over and here I was worried so that just go, and I did fill a whole pint jar of brine now we're going to put these in the canner and I have two empty jars in there just just so they don't rattle on, around so much and you also want to make sure you have at least an inch and a half headspace of water in there so they have enough water to cover in them all right we're going to set it on medium high heat and let this come to a rapid boil and we're going to process for 15 minutes when that happens You want to turn off your timer and take your lid off. I'm sorry about the steam. Then you're going to set another timer for five minutes. Now remember not to tip the jars while you're pulling them out. The water on top of the lid will evaporate or drain off somehow. You do not want to tip your, your jar. That might prevent it from sealing. So just carefully lift your jar straight up and over to your towel. And this is the beautiful brine that I made that's going to tenderize and marinate a pork loin one of these fall days and that after you cook it makes a fabulous gravy as my husband would tell you now after these come out of the cooler don't touch them for 24 hours then you can take the rings off wash them in soapy water with vinegar and then label them and take to your cellar or your pantry and I would wait at least six to eight weeks before opening these the flavor builds up after a year's time the heat will go away so if you're scared to death about the heat eventually it will get mild thanks for stopping by the farmhouse today appreciate you coming and visiting me and comment down below what would you use this recipe for I like deviled eggs with it I've tried pickled eggs with them, but I think I need to work on a recipe because when I did it, the outer edge of the coating of the eggs got tough and it was hard to chew. So we're going to work on that. And I like marinating it in pork chops and pork loin, and it's also good on chicken. thought about chicken skewers earlier today. So the possibilities are endless of what you can use. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. It's free to do so. And if you found value in this video, please give me a thumbs up. It does it is appreciated and I and it helps support my channel. Well, until the next one, God bless and have a good week.